We've made it to logistic regression. We've looked at single and multiple regression before, but now we're going to turn non-parametric. So logistic regression is where the predictor variable uh, is a significant predictor of a binary outcome. So our response variable or our y variable is going to be binary, so zero or one. So this is definitely not a normal distribution. So a lot of times uh, we could give an example here is does body max index, so that's our predictor variable or our x variable, whether it influences mortality, which is going to be binary, yes or no. So our null would be there is no different, there is no effect, and then the alternate would be others. So there's a lot going on with this R code, so we'll do our best to walk through it. So again, we're using web power and then web power logistic. So the first big thing we need here is two probabilities. P0, which is um, the probability of observing one for the outcome variable when the predictor variable e uh, x equals zero. And uh, the probability, and then P1 is the probability of observing one for the outcome variable when the predictor x equals 1. So let's maybe take our example is uh, you have to have at least some background or, or, or guess again kind of like effect size we can guess on these probabilities. So let's say um, an, another way of seeing this is like if the null is true. So let's say our probability of mortality kind of just uh, as the null or when our body max interest equals zero like or the the, the mean at the mean value not so much equals zero but like at the mean value let's use 0.15 so like there's a 15 percent mortality rate in what we're looking at but if there is an effect maybe the mortality rate is higher so maybe body mass if it's significantly higher than the mean there's a higher mortality. That's kind of what it's saying there, saying here. We again need alpha and power. And then we need, uh, again, like t-test, we need alternative. We can look at two side, less or greater. We'll use two side here because we don't care about the direction. Maybe low body max um, influences mortality too. And so, uh, and then now here we actually have to talk, uh, tell the test the distribution of the predictor so we know that this is bin binary but we have to tell them what the x is so like body mass index you can do all sorts of things the default is Bernoulli now for body max index I'm pretty sure it's normally distributed so we'll go with normal for now but you should kind of confirm this with whatever data you actually have and then the parameter is the corresponding parameters for our family uh, the default I think it's mean of a zero and standard deviation of one. So we'll, we'll do that um, here. So let's plug these things in and see what we get. So WP logistics. So our, our P0 probability, a P1 probability, alpha and power, alternative two-sided and a normal family size. Spits out a lot of things, but then the N here is our sample size. So it rounds up to 166 total samples. So kind of more things we have to put in there. We have to kind of get our heads around what, what it's asking, but it still gives us kind of the standard N. Okay, there is another main type of regression we can look at, which is called Poisson regression. Now logistic was a response variable or Y variable that was binary, like one or zero. Here, this is going to be a, the response variable is going to be a rate of events over a set period. So this is non normally distributed, of course. And so we're going to also assume here the events of the rates are independent. So subjects can have multiple events as long as they're independent. So uh, maybe an example of this would be to flesh this out is, does a change in dose drug dose decrease the rate of adverse effects. 
So this is our, I'm just going to maybe start writing like this. This is our Y variable. This is our X variable. So our Y is our response variable. So again, like the logistic, the Boisson has a lot going on to it. So let's dig through. Now it has these, uh, these rates instead of proportions. There's the base rate under the null. This has, got, has to be actually has to be positive. And then the relative increase in the event rate. Uh, this, this is how you kind of get the analog of effect size. I've, I've been showing you here that we don't really have an actual effect size that we calculate. The, the program kind of does it. Uh, alpha and power. Again, we need to uh, the tail of the test. And then again, that family and parameter kind of thing for that X variable. So that, that means it's for these. So for this example, uh, so the null is that a change in drug dose doesn't affect the, doesn't decrease the rate of adverse effects. And then the null is that it does. So uh, again, we have to have some background or guess on these, these rates. So we're going to say, uh, with nothing else happening, the rate is one, but then uh, on the relative increase, or I guess in our case decrease is 0 0.80, so it goes down by 20%. We'll use less because we're actually asking about decreasing. And then, now I have no idea about the distribution of this drug doses, so I'm gonna go with uniform. So that is one of our options here. Um, it's the most conservative, doesn't really make much assumptions, so it's going to be the weakest, but it's not bad if you want to be conservative. And again, you should just confirm whatever distribution you actually have, and so I'll, I'll default and here the parameters of mean equals zero, standard deviation is one. And so I don't actually have to set these out. If I have them at the default, I can just leave this uh, parameter. I don't even need to fill that out. So let's take a look at our regression here. In R, we use your Poisson, our different rates, alpha and power, alternative and family. And then it gives us this N for a total of 1,667 samples total. So there you go. Okay, breathe in a little bit. We got past logistic and Poisson regression. Now let's practice a little bit. Um, these are definitely uh, less intuitive than the tests we've seen so far. So definitely, I really encourage you to at least just try this to get your head around it uh, yourself. Okay, let's dig into this. So this first one, I know it's going to be logistic regression because I see that our our Y value, our response value is binary, yes and no. And we have some data here. So we're looking at temperature, see if that influences sleep disorder. So this is our X value, this is our Y. And we see that it's binary. And then temperature is probably uh, normally distributed. That's, I think, normally what temperature is. So we see that this is binary. And so our mean temperature, we have mean temperature, standard deviation. So this is our range, um, and we find that uh, one standard deviation goes from 97 to 98 point something. So we're gonna find that our P zero, so under the null, so if there's, if they're within, essentially if, if, if our sleep disorder we only had one sleep disorder with a yes that fell within the standard range. It was this one. So the, the probably there's only a third of a probability to kind of have this sleep disorder within uh, this kind of standard range. Whereas the other two here and here fell without. So that's our P1. So we can plug these in here and again, uh, since we just say influence, we don't, we're just going to use two sided normal distribution to give us a 41 samples total. So now for two, 
determine, uh, we see a word here, rate of lung cancer incidence change. So that tips me off that it's Poisson regression. And then of course, two-sided because uh, it says change is not, goes up or down. And so uh, the base rate, sometimes also known as the intercept, we think if you're thinking graphically, um, I, I look this up, looks like the, the base rate is 57.84 per 10,000. So we're gonna say our, our base rate is those two divided, so 1.0005. And let's say that uh, this drug treatment, we're gonna just expect a relative increase in the slope. So it's gonna be a negative slope because we think maybe this drug goes down uh, to be, uh, sorry, this is the, the exponential of this, by the way. Um, these rates are exponential. Uh, so exponential is negative 1.02, which is 0.36. And then, because uh, I don't really know much about information about uh, this drug treatment, we're going to say it's a default with the Bernoulli. Plug all these things in here. And it gives us a total sample size of 59.